So I've played over 60 hours of Starfield, completed all the major optional missions, played through the game on New Game Plus, and did a large portion of other things to grind out the remaining achievements that will likely require more time. Despite the many polarizing opinions surrounding Starfield, it's a safe experience that focuses on both the positive and negative features found in Bethesda open world games, deciding to refine those same mechanics rather than risk innovation. Starfield's story is simple at its core. You're a random miner who happened to interact with a rare artifact. Turns out that there's a special organization dedicated to traveling the stars and locating these artifacts called Constellation, and you happen to be these rare people who are able to interact with these artifacts and trigger special effects. You're then asked to join this organization and find more of these artifacts in the universe. The story is a large part a giant fetch quest. The thrills come from discovering new worlds, building connections, and the random missions that will have you engage in with new life forms. The story takes a while to get going, and much of the narrative is focused on gathering these alien objects, and it's only towards the final third of the adventure where things start to get interesting. It's a very tall order telling someone to invest hours before the game starts to gain traction, especially when it's at the end of the game where the narrative picks up and dives into interesting fields. That being said, the game's finale was profound, giving you a summary of your entire journey, and the new game plus is actually an extension of the core story. I won't say how, but the new game plus in Starfield is treated as an extension of your overall narrative with added benefits, with the only things carrying over are your level and skills, but not your inventory. You do get something really big at the beginning of your first new game plus, but I'll keep that a secret. I'm sure there will be lore videos that will provide an extensive understanding of the story and how grandiose it is, but at the moment it's not really that incredible, especially if you take it for its surface level features. It only gets as profound depending on whether you interact with the characters and develop a connection with them. If you don't care about any of the people on this journey, it'll just fall short and you'll just go on a giant fetch quest for no reason. That being said, the game does encourage you to take on a variety of characters on your journey. Some are forced based on the mission at hand, but most of the game you can complete alone. As you build relationships, you'll unlock new dialogue, exclusive missions, and sometimes romance options. The partner explains when they want to talk to you to highlight their growing relationship and to showcase your bond has grown. It's definitely a lot more fleshed out than past Bethesda games, with the companion opening up to difficulties that end up with an exclusive mission based on their own businesses. With this perspective, Starfield's main narrative is meant to be an extension based on those relationships, so when the finale comes up, you'll end up deciding on one of two significant choices. But again, it's a tall order because of the time investment. As for the dialogue choices you'll pick from, many of these are just elaborate or provide summaries of existing facts about the world. It's definitely a better system than Fallout 4 where a lot of dialogue was just the same thing you just said it in different words. However, for those hoping for your choices to alter the world will be sadly disappointed. There are some decisions that do change how characters interact with you, but the world remains largely the same. You can go full psycho and join pirates while killing dozens of innocents, and it won't really matter. You can pay a bounty and just walk away into a major town without any type of consequence. This makes sense since Starfield is an open-ended game, and locking out major areas or making huge changes to the world at large would violate a lot of options available to the player and shift the story in a way that I don't think it would be able to be completable. It is more about keeping access to everything in the world while making you believe that you have choices that will have profound impacts in the end game. The gameplay of Starfield is more of an extension of Fallout 4's systems. The developers played it safe here and simply built on previous Bethesda open world games that have been established. The protagonist is mute this time around, with an array of customization options ranging from default perks that can open new dialogue options and gameplay changes. As far as I can tell, the gender option doesn't matter, but the core per perks do, offering different advantages based on the circumstances. You can play in either third or first person from my experience, but 
third person isn't really an ideal option. It never really has been for most Bethesda games. You'll rather play in first person. You'll have a selection of weapons that can easily be slotted for easier access, options for armor and clothing. There's a ton of customization for weapons and gear with the option to make it your own from the crafting and modern tools available to you. That being said, customization does have its complications, especially when it comes to leveling. So leveling acts in a very traditional way where you'll gain experience by defeating enemies, completing missions, and performing skill-based actions like persuasion encounters. You can invest into five categories, which sounds prudent, but gets vexed very quickly. Each perk has ranks that require a skill point to upgrade. The issue is that you need to complete a challenge before you can upgrade that specific perk. On the surface, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but the grind can be annoying. Like you have to kill 50 enemies with ballistic weapons or take a certain amount of shield damage. It's just a lot of busy work for the option to upgrade the perk, especially for those looking to build a stealth option, be prepared for a lot of, head a lot of headaches. It is just tedious and these challenges should have been a separate category that allows bonus ex experience for completing them instead of being requirements. This is especially problematic for stealth. Unlike other Bethesda games, stealth has become a lot harder this time around. Unless you invest very early on, and I mean by the character customization screen, prepare for a lot of grinding just to upgrade the necessary perks. As if you don't do this, the Ryujin questline, which is an optional mission uh, set of missions, it's going to be a nightmare since much of the story requires you to complete it using stealth and lockpicking requirements. I'm sure a lot of players will just rush through these missions for, uh, completely not taking in consideration stealth, but it doesn't help that a lot of these options are locked behind very strict requirements that will require you just to bang your head against the wall. Speaking of stealth, the developers decide not to include a local map for areas. I don't understand why. There's a waypoint system that showcases where you're supposed to go by scanning, but it doesn't always give you the most direct route to your objective, such as with the Ryujin missions as I explained, which requires you to follow a very specific route, but it sometimes is problematic because you have to remain stealthy, so you see the problem here. I don't really know why there isn't a local map, I can only chalk it up to laziness. This also goes for large settlements as well. That being said, shooting and melee combat works well enough. It's nothing to complain about. Shooting feels nice and responsive with a collection of great weapons to use depending on your preference. It's definitely an improvement from Fallout 4. There's, this also goes for boss encounters with a few unique battles. I hope if they make an expansion for this game, which was hinted in the Microsoft leak, they'll add a lot more unique boss encounters, but it's definitely a step up from their previous games. The biggest addition to Starfield is the space exploration. It works well enough, ship piloting is effective, and you can build an array of ships or just choose the default option. You can't use everything in the ship at once and will need to divert energy based on what you need during that circumstance such as weapon, shielding, engine, and the grav drive for jumping between systems. There is a loading screen between taking off, so don't expect any seamless gameplay when, similar to No Man's Sky. Ship combat is effective and basic, but it works. You target enemies either through the lock-on system or manually to destroy ships. Any cargo is then stored in your ship, which is finite, but can be customized. Starfield has a robust ship customization tool, but you can purchase pre-built ships or find them in the world and store them into your kiosk. I always went for the pre-built models because the tools available were very confusing to me of how to build your ship and I've seen online that a lot of people despite the very popular pictures of very elaborate ships have also been having trouble with this stuff. That being said, space ex exploration is very dubious. At first it's thrilling, but over time it becomes a chore. This is because you're limited to how far you can jump based on your grav drive. This makes sense since you can't jump to the other side of the map. However, this also means you cannot jump to systems you've already visited. Instead, you have to make multiple jumps just to get to a town if you want to sell stuff. I don't know why there isn't an automatic selling system on your ship, or maybe there is one and I just haven't found it, but it's a very, it's a big inconvenience. 
Speaking of selling, the interface has no quick select option for the various towns you're exploring. So if you want to go back to a specific town to sell all your gear, you have the process of just trying to find it in the very complicated map system and hoping that you can just go there very quickly. The interface is such a mess when it comes to exploration. Eventually I did get used to it, but at the beginning it was just such a mess. Now there are a lot of planets to explore, but only a few selections have anything good. This is expected, not every planet is going to have, you know, towns and settlements. Instead, much of the planets you'll explore are just empty spaces with occasional locations and enemies, most of which repeat the same patterns such as bases and structures, so once you get down how certain layouts are presented, you'll instantly be able to navigate them with no problem, know where the more powerful enemies are, the gear, everything. I didn't have an issue with this type of system. I really like going out into space and seeing what's out there, the people, random encounters, and overall ability to just find various planets to explore that have different life on them was a thrill. The problem was the amount of time I spent traveling to get to from one location to the next. You see, a majority of Starfield will have you spend in time going from location to location. This means navigating the menu to find a planet, fast traveling, getting out of your ship, then you can head to your destination. This doesn't seem like much, but it reminds me of Mass Effect Andromeda's zoom in planetary system. At first it wasn't a big deal and it actually was pretty cool, but after the 20th time it starts to get to you. It doesn't help that the interface for Starfield is terrible. For PC users I can see this not being that much of a problem, but for controller users, yes I played this on Xbox, you're going to have to get used to the entire system. Dear God, this entire quick selection system is just such a nightmare. Even after 10 hours of playing this game, I just had so much trouble with the interface. You're probably wondering, but this worked for other Bethesda titles like Oblivion, Skyrim, or Fallout, so why is it such a problem here for Starfield? The reason is that in those games, you can go from one side of the map to the next with ease. There is always something to do with an arm's length such as when you got to the opening section of Skyrim, you can go to White Run, or you can go to the other side of the map, you can go to the Nords. There is always something to do with an arm's reach, there was no buffer, but in Starfield, there are constant buffers that stop you in place in order for you to get from one location to the next. Like, imagine for every town or everything that you did in Skyrim, like every interesting thing that happened, there was a loading screen. You'll get very sick of it very quickly. The option for fast traveling has been increased for the benefit of the player. For the most part, you can fast travel from any location with very few restrictions such as combat. And if the game has a predetermined moment, you can't travel from that location until it happens. I was able to fast travel to my next location right after completing an objective almost all the time and even skip the takeoff animation for my ship. Overall, much of Starfield matches the same core concepts that previous Bethesda games have followed, from the idea of wandering the world to find missions, exclusive factions that don't care if you join them all, and creating your own adventure through discovery. There is a lot to enjoy in Starfield's gameplay, just don't expect many innovations from the formula, only advancements, like the story choices, many of the decisions you'll make are just optional at best and cosmetic. Yeah, you can choose to side with a pirate faction over a government faction, but I didn't see much of a choice and much of a change after I chose one over the other. I was just hated by the other people, but I could still walk into a town despite being the leader of one of the most violent pirate gangs in the entire universe. I did get lost in the quest, and the addiction of exploring the unknown is there only to realize that, you know, hours have passed. Something I haven't experienced in a Bethesda title since I played Skyrim on the Xbox 360. Since it's so formulaic, I knew what to expect, but it's also very addicting, so it's more like a Marvel movie. They know what works, they stick with it, but we don't know how long that's going to last with this type of game. Now possibly the biggest thing that Bethesda has been struggling with since the release of Fallout 76 was stability. A lot of people have become more than less fed up with the lack of technical stability within the game and this had to be something that had to launch in a near perfect state. No PlayStation 3 problems resurfacing, no Fallout 76 problems. 
but that doesn't mean this entire game is stable. It is definitely one of their most stable games and the delays they face definitely added to making sure this game released in a competent state. I did encounter about 7 crashes and multiple glitches during my playthrough though. Most of them were just funny moments and nothing really game breaking such as an NPC not appearing or other problems that would have made me soft lock my game. The frame rate does drop when in major cities but I didn't encounter this in smaller settlements or isolated dungeon like areas so it could be just because they tried to pack the cities with a lot of NPCs that's causing this issue. Some Sometimes I would go into elevators and suddenly like 12 people would appear. So I think it's mainly just them trying to pack as many people within these towns to make them feel lived in. In terms of visuals, the game looks great. The character models do feel a bit off, but this is expected for large open world games. They look AI generated and they try to match their speech patterns with their mouth movements and it just looks very awkward. The voice actors did an outstanding job, I had no problem with the sound design, but it's just like the character models definitely have that type of modern day Ubisoft quality to them where they just seem like they're automated in a lot of ways. So don't expect like realistic models. Again, this is expected for very large games like Starfield. You're not going to have individual character models that look high quality all the time. But coming from games like Fallout 76, Wolfenstein Youngblood, and the recently released Star uh, Redfall, Starfield is definitely a refreshing experience and I really hope they can keep this going because yeah, those games were not great and this one definitely is a step in the right direction. Starfield isn't a groundbreaking experience and I don't think it deserves those 9 and 10 perfect scores it's getting but it definitely doesn't deserve all the hate that it's getting. It follows the same formula that previous Bethesda open world games have accomplished but it's a lot stable and effective in its system. It doesn't attempt to break ground with anything new but stick to what is familiar and known. Even the new additions such as space exploration is done in a very tame way to ensure that it's something that players can be instantly familiar and grasp without any type of issue. That being said, Starfield is something that you'll know what you're expecting when you start the game or if you weren't won over by previous Bethesda open world games, this won't change your mind about them. In a lot of ways, Starfield is the formula just being slightly changed and altered to suit a brand new atmosphere. I think it's a fantastic game for Bethesda open world gamers who want something new but it won't win any new fans to this type of gameplay or experience. Regardless, it's definitely a worthy experience and something I thoroughly enjoyed. I think if you are looking for something that will provide you with hours of content and some of it enjoyable, some of it not so much, this is going to be your game. It definitely is something that is only available for those who are willing to put the time into it and if you're not available for that you're not going to have a good time with starfield regardless good job Bethesda for at least making sure that the game runs and we didn't get another fallout 76. Mm -hmm.